come out and out of an intro, but I have a tutorial on foliage work. Not really, but this is basically all that we're doing in this video because we are building a very, very big enclosure in this that has not a lot of like crazy features, to be honest. It's really just like a paddock. Um, but you know what? You need these kind of exhibits in a zoo. I always knew that uh, in this area I wanted to have a ungulate. Is that how you pronounce that? I wasn't really sure which one though, which is new for me because usually when I build something, I know what animals or what animal I am building for. Like I'm very particular with that, but for this, I just knew I wanted some ungulate, right? Um, so it would have almost been the gems bug. Um, and I was also thinking about zebras. Honestly, I don't remember why I didn't choose the zebras, but it ended up being the African buffalo. And I'm really happy with them. I think they are so beautiful. I love anything cattle. I think I've said that before. Um, I just I just think they're so such pretty animals. Like even just like a regular domesticated cow, I'm just like, oh my god, you're the cutest. Like one of my absolute most hope for animal that it could come to this game is definitely the um, Scottish Highland cattle. They are so cute. Like, just th their babies are beyond. Like, they're so cute. I, oh, I love them. <laughs> um, fun fact, my mom actually, when my mom and my dad first got together, my mom was collecting like cow anything like figurines and i think she had like a like a tea kettle with like a cow print on it like i still remember that and i'm pretty sure that when i was a baby like like a toddler in the very first apartment that we were in i'm pretty sure that the kitchen had like a cow wallpaper i don't know I don't know, my mom's not crazy, I promise. She's just, she really likes cows. And I don't even know what happened to all that stuff, to be honest. Like, I've just not seen it in years. Like, I don't know, maybe, it, I don't know. I I have to ask her <laughs> why she stopped doing that because she's not collecting anything anymore now. Um, I guess, no, she, she collects mugs, but they have nothing to do with cows. But <laughs> um, I don't know, Is it, I don't know, is it? Just everyone has this like one animal that they're sort of a bit obsessed with. For me, it's toucans um, and ducks a bit. Um, and I've had the same thing for a long time where I would buy anything with dinosaurs on it. And I also had a time where I'd buy anything with uh, like, oh God, what they're called in English? Like, uh, like, the only word that comes to mind is crustaceans, but that's not the word I'm looking for. Like, you know what Mr. Krabs is? That animal. I don't know what the English word for that is. But like, if you watch SpongeBob, which if you didn't, what? Um, Mr. Krabs, that animal, I, I cannot think of the word right now. Like, it, it's not that I don't know what it's called. It's just the word doesn't come to mind right now, um, which interesting. By the way, I realized that when I watch something in English before I start my voiceover, um, I, it's easier for me to speak, which is interesting because I, I, I think um, I've been studying English since I was seven years old. <laughs> so I think it shouldn't matter, but it does. Like it just makes it easier if before that I heard someone um, talk and interestingly enough also I realized that if I watch a lot of uh, something someone British speaking I kind of pick up on British stuff which is really funny because obviously if you're not a native speaker you don't have a native accent so you just pick up whatever you listen to a lot which is so funny um, and also like uh, in school it, it was so weird because up to a certain point you're only allowed to use the British vocabulary in Germany like you you can't say kids, you have to say children, right? So stuff like that. And then at some point it just becomes irrelevant, like you can say whatever, so you kind of start to mix it up weirdly. Um, and also, let's be honest, I think it's, it's weirder to use British terms if you're not British than use American terms when you're not American. <laughs> like, to me that's weird, I don't know. Um, and yeah, I don't know. But, oh my god, okay, question to the non, uh, non, 
native speakers. Which accent do you think is hardest to understand? Because my dad is, he is certain that he thinks Americans are the hardest to understand. And I'm here to say, uh-uh. <laughs> like, I, I can't even say what I find hardest to understand, but I don't know. I, I would say Australian English is very easy to understand. To me, American English is also easy to understand. It's probably like the very thick Scottish that is that is harder for me to understand than 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 Americans. Like, okay, uh, here's the thing. My dad thinks he doesn't understand them because we were in New York once and a lot of people were like talking very casually and with like slang in it, but that's not what I'm like thinking about. I think that American English overall is easiest to understand because you're the most used to it because most movies and stuff, like if you watch them in the original language, it'll be like either very accentless or it will be American-ish, you know? Um, so I don't know. I don't know why I wanted to know that, but my dad and I were talking about that and I was shocked that he thought that Americans were hard to understand because I don't think that. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I also don't, th well, I don't know. Do I think Australians are harder to understand? I definitely think that it's harder for me to hear if someone's us no wait that doesn't make sense it, no 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 here's the thing if i hear someone with australian accent i'm always like is that person british but if i hear someone british i know that they are british like that is it, it's like when you're awake you know you're awake but when you're in a dream you don't know that you're in a dream despite you knowing that if you were awake you would know that you're awake okay this is getting philosophical i don't know where i wanted to go for it with this i wanted to talk about buffaloes <laughs> okay so um uh as i said we're not doing a lot of interesting stuff with this exhibit we're basically just doing like terrain painting and some like terrain variations and we're doing foliage work and i honestly really like this habitat and i think these are the kind of habitats that you're not paying a lot of attention to maybe when you're in a real life zoo um which is a pity and um i think that you know a lot of people especially people who aren't necessarily i guess zoo goers like i see that a lot because if you don't know i work at a zoo i see it a lot there's people who really only want to see like the big ticket animals and i honestly this this still makes me angry to this day like i i this is last year and i'm still mad about it i there was a lady um and it was pretty like mid during the day so kind of late and it was kind of at the beginning of the zoo and this kid was looking at it a smaller animal um and she said to the kid like oh my god you only ever step with the boring animals just keep going and i just thought like turtles aren't boring like this kid just he just wanted to look at the turtles like you in a zoo to look at the animals and she was she i gotta know i don't know i thought that was that was rude <laughs> i thought that was that was not okay <laughs> um and and so yeah i guess for a lot of people like the big ticket animals are the ones that they want to see and it's it's also it's also kind of infuriating because you wouldn't believe how many people come up to the cash register like at the end of the day um and say like i didn't see the lions so i want my money back and you're like yeah but you saw the entire rest of the zoo like if the lions are hiding or they're not doing much and you feel like you didn't see your favorite animal, like, I'm sorry, but you still use the service that a zoo is providing. And like, I don't know. It's also like, uh, I, not really so much with the zoo that I work at, but I, I heard it in other zoos or I've, I've read, um, like, like, uh, what is it called? Like, uh, um, <sighs> Like when you write a comment, but for for, for a business, like, uh, and you like give one to five stars, I oh English isn't doing it for me today. Um, 
So if you give a feedback, whatever. So I, I, I read a lot of the people are like, oh, there's so many like construction sites. And then you look at the website and it's like, they say that they have construction sites. Like, why do you go if construction sites bother you when you know there's construction sites? Like, one time I've been to another zoo and they had a lot of construction. Like, it was a lot. Like, you, it was a huge chunk of the zoo, which is fine because they said it. And like, even at the desk, it said that they went down with ticket prices because they know that not a lot of the zoo is accessible. And so I was like, how can you still be mad? Like you even paid less money because of it. And it, you know, I don't know. I don't know, some people are weird. Some people are just weird. <laughs> but um, so yeah, what I just wanted to say is that I think that this is maybe the kind of exhibit that you would walk past as someone who's not super interested in zoos or super interested in animals. And you just, you go to the zoo like, every few years you know and you just you just want to see like the big ones and and if you don't see them you're angry i think that for people who really enjoy zoos that these kind of exhibits are just just as important um and uh i mean like i said i love anything cattle i'm always excited for them um i i would buy a cattle <laughs> expansion pack and this is also one of the reasons why i personally would be very very interested in a do more domestic animal kind of pack because i think farm animals are cute and they're interesting and they belong in a zoo i've never seen a zoo without that kind of section and you understand people saying that padding zoos aren't good necessarily because kids can be horrible with kids uh with well, kids can be horrible with kids, but kids can also be horrible with animals. So I understand that not everyone is like excited for that, but I say give me farm animals and don't let people pet them. That's fine with me too. I just, I just really want them. And I just really, really, really want the Scottish Highland cow. That would, that's one of the animals that I'm really like, ah, oh, bummer if we don't get them. But I will say that, I mean, we do have other cattle, so I think the i that i'll i would also be fine with having that as a mod so whatever um i however really want a duck i want ducks and i want flying birds i'm just like oh i can't wait for the next pack i'm not usually someone who is really like hype for the next pack but i just now it's getting to the point where i'm like i want to know how many more packs they're gonna do because for me it looks like they could still sell like a year worth of packs probably right like come on we would all probably still buy that right um so i don't know i'm thinking like get just you know if they even if they did a hundred more animals i think people would still be buying it because the more animals you have the more fun the game is and but i also think that at a certain point it would need to be like a bigger thing like it would need to be aquatic like fully aquatic like aquarium type animals i'm not even saying like you know let's get into the like the dolphin discussion but just just like fully aquatic like aquariums i think that at a certain point like if the game gets keeps going it would be hard to justify not putting them in. Like, let's say we only have like two more packs, then sure, give us give us normal habitat animals. Don't put the effort anymore, but if it goes on for a long time, I'm really thinking that we're gonna get that. I don't know why I, I just went into this. Oh my God, my thoughts are everywhere today. Um, it was, it's funny because before I started this voiceover, I was thinking like, Oh, what am I gonna talk about? Because I'm not doing much at the moment, so I, I'm not encountering interesting information. And I honestly was thinking about, do I really tell about the fact that my entire room smells like banana today? Because yesterday I was eating oatmeal. Okay, well, I guess now I'm telling the story. Yesterday I was eating oatmeal and <laughs> I put banana in it because I love that. And uh, I only used half the banana and I forgot the rest of it. And like, I, I wanted to eat it after, but I just forgot because I, was, I wasn't hungry anymore. And I left it on my desk, which yes, I eat at my desk. I'm a pig. Get it. It's okay. Um, and, and I left it there and uh, I didn't really see it because it was like kind of to the side of my computer. And 
<laughs> it just smelled like banana and now I, I notice it like right when I started the voiceover because I was picking up the mic from there I was like oh right it smells like banana because I forgot the banana and the peel looks disgusting but honestly the part inside just still looks fine so I might just have oatmeal again with banana in it so I mean you really needed that information didn't you like you couldn't have lived without knowing <laughs> that I forget bananas behind my computer <laughs> Oh my god, but okay, so one thing I actually wanted to talk about with the build again um, I again built like this hay feeder thing, which I want to do more like I, I I need to do more I'm so lazy with the interior lately um, But I also have to say like I'm not very motivated for interior in this specific zoo Especially because I don't have the conservation pack stuff and I think without the conservation pack, backstage stuff is just like horrible. Like I don't like doing it uh, and thinking like, oh, I wish I had like a broom. I wish I had a bucket now. So meh, I don't know. It's not really exciting to do without the conservation pack, which honestly just says ama how amazing the conservation pack is. But I just realized that I talk longer than this video was, which I'm so sorry about. <laughs> Let's actually go into the real time park. All right, look at this nice big uh, paddock that they have here. I'm actually quite happy with how I was able to kind of, uh, you know, put in some height elevations despite this being fairly flat anyway. But also if you look at it, um, we kind of have to find a way down from this level to this level. So this part is actually already higher. So we're kind of finding our way down here now. Um, so that was also something that I had to achieve with this exhibit. And it wasn't planned to be that big. I kind of wanted to cut it off here. Um, but I felt it was weird to kind of have the cut here when the other one on the other side kind of continues, you know? I don't know. I don't know, very specific thought there, probably not important, but <laughs> I just wanted to share it. So, um, let's actually put our person down here. Um, ignore all of those crazy things. They come up in sandbox. I don't know why. Oh my god, what? Okay. So, this is obviously not the site that you'd come from. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I, I've not yet decided where to put the entrance. But we have this little, like, viewing area here. Um, so kind of like, almost like a balcony. Um, we have some water here. It's not, uh, I didn't want it to have like an artificial pool. I didn't think it needed that. Um, just, this is the lowest part of the exhibit. So I thought like naturally the water would collect here. So I thought it was fine to not do an artificial thing. Um, did I pause the game? I swear it was running a second ago. Um, oh, look at them. They're so pretty. I love them. Hello. I changed those doors uh, after the 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 video was done, um, because they look kind of pay like um like bare, you know. Um, but I just love this. I think it's so nice. It it almost looks like you're actually looking into some nature, but it doesn't lose that little touch of zoo because you do see kind of you know buildings to the sides and everything. Um. And obviously this artificial wall here. And then kind of in the back here. Because I figured, you know, you wouldn't really see that from afar. We ha also have like a metal um, wall kind of thing. So, I this is also like a tip that if, if you're struggling with, uh, with exhibits, right? Think about how you can have different ways of enclosing the animal. Like here we have for the viewing gallery, we have this... For the more visible parts of the barrier, we have these, like, logs, which I love, by the way. Then right here, this is just a cliff that keeps them in. And then over there, we have the fence. We're going to look at that later. Um, oh, they are just so pretty. Like, oh, so pretty. So pretty. Okay, um, let's actually, okay, so I, I just wanted to show you, because we're on the way, so I don't know what to do here, really. I think I'll just do, um, some nature. The bears are running around. Um, some nature. Then over here, this is the big plaza that has the fries and stuff. But here is the backstage entrance to this building, um, which I'm quite happy with. I can't even put my finger on why I am, but I am. 
Um, maybe we should do something here because that seems a bit unsafe, but whatever. Um, I just I just wanted to click the door to open it. I don't know. I've not been playing other games. I don't know where that came from. Um, so obviously we're gonna you know do something here. Uh, I don't know why there's a gap. That, ooh, that was not what I planned. <laughs> so can we get down here, please? Somehow, please. Hello. Okay, maybe not. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's, let's go back down here. Um, okay, so we, we need to kind of do something with this small little area here. As you can tell, this is already a habitat, uh, door because you can tell by this little thing, which by the way, I've seen that in, 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 in the zoo that I work at. So that is, that is very accurate. Like these little, like pads that you don't carry like outside dirt into it. So this is the exhibit for the, um, Gary Eels. I don't want to go through it cause I don't want to be on the roof again, but, oh, let's get rid of this but this is the door to here to the interior um i think maybe i'll put like some shelves in here or a card or something uh it, it still looks pretty empty but uh yeah i mean this wasn't my focus here um so yeah uh i i quite like i didn't notice that before well whatever okay let's let's not fix this i'm so easily distracted to I just wanted to say I'm so easily distracted today. I'm easily distracted in general. Um, but uh, this is something I quite like to do. And I kind of forgot about doing it lately. That these these uh, pieces, they're actually from the foliage catalog. If you sing them down into the hay beds, they kind of look like sticking out hay. Um, so if you want to use that, feel free. We also have this, uh, this little like open window thing here. Which I've also not done in a while. I think the last time I actually did that was with the uh, badgers in so i guess the second video on this channel ever um and i think we're like 70 something videos in so yay us um so this is the the viewing area from down here i didn't actually want to go in but oh now i do oh they're so cute uh look at them look at those noses they're so cute Oh, I love them. Okay, Ugh, enough love. Let's go to the other side. Um, and look at them from here. I don't necessarily like usually giving two different sides, but I I've been doing this in this zoo kind of a lot because this zoo doesn't have a like um how do you say like a, a cohesive one way to go through it. It's more like gridded, you know, the path system. So. You know, I've not seen people sit down on benches in forever. I just noticed that. <laughs> I was just like, I forgot they can actually do that. So I actually really like the view from here. It's harder to see them, but I think this looks a lot more realistic. Not more realistic, but it does look very realistic with just like this, um, this like mesh fence here. Um, I think that gives it a very nice look. And it's also like, it doesn't keep away from the focus that this is the more prominent exhibit and this is what you're supposed to look at but when you look over to the other side you can still see the buffaloes right um and then when you you can still look from here i don't know what's up with these guys um uh, and this is kind of a, a, a remnants of me not knowing which animal i wanted to put in here because i figured out put something in here that could jump on it, which I didn't, um, but that's fine. I think it still looks fine. Um, maybe we can angle it so they can walk onto it actually. Um, and then over here we have what I talked about before, this like metal fence, but you barely see it. Like not even from here, this, this doesn't really stick into your eye, right? Like your focus will be these like cute little uh, like purple flowers here and you look into the distance and you see this like, Heightened, heightened rock formation thing here, and and so I think this is fine there because it doesn't take away anything. But anything that you know directly catches the eye of the visitor, like this, I want it. I would want to be prettier. Um, so definitely try to switch up your f fencings and and what what keeps the animal in to say like like here. This building is also part of what keeps the animal from escaping, right? So, I don't know. I guess that's that's a, a tip from my side on how to make things look 
real, more realistic. I'm so sorry. I cannot talk today. I don't know what it is. I'm very tired, though. I just got up. And, um, yeah, so maybe that's it. Maybe I can tell myself that that is it. <laughs> um, I actually find a pretty thing to look at. What could it be? Oh, it's the buffaloes. It's the prettiest thing in here. Um, Okay, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. By the way, uh, I know I've said that we are going to get back into the theme park. Um, and I probably could have been done recording by now, but I knew that I couldn't uh, finish uh, editing and everything in time. So I'm pretty sure, I know I've been saying this for a while, I'm pretty sure the next video could be where we go back to a theme park, which I'm so excited about because I'm still very excited about that project. Um, if you don't know what happened, I accidentally deleted an entire zoo file and I've been rebuilding it. And so I'm excited to go back into it once I'm done rebuilding it. Um, anyway, <laughs> that has nothing to do with our beautiful buffaloes here and they're the stars of this video. So uh, let's, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that someone out there loves buffaloes as much as I do. And uh, I hope to see you around another time. Bye.